Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. With a tight illustrator pan and watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Well, hello, and welcome to the Artist Friends Podcast. So this is episode 70 for November the 9th. My name is Clyde J. Kell, and I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. All right. I'm not going to say – uh, Constance, say hello because you do like what Gracie Burns you know, did like last week. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was, was on first. <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. We had such a great conversation after the podcast ended, folks, <laughs> about about old time radio comedy. Anyhow, at Diane's suggestion, this week the um, discussion will be about copyright and trademark for artists. If you go to www talkartpodcast.com that's www.talkartpodcast.com you'll see the recommended video links i got some little some short videos uh, discussions uh, about uh, copyright uh, issues that artists need to be aware of and the first the first video uh, was really nice it gave a very brief overview of uh, you know some copyright things and uh diane uh when you brought this up what what are some of the things that, that uh, you think about or you got any stories to share with the copyright issues that you've had well um i did used to do a lot of copywriting when i was doing uh, licensing work because a lot of that stuff was um manipulated on the computer so it came you had computer images and they're a lot easier to copy for, you know for people to copy and steal than an actual painting is so i was used to copyright everything and um but years i mean it's it's changed some since i have done it so i I know the costs have gone up and they've changed some of the um ways you can copyright stuff now i'm not really up on the current stuff where they in the current price thing but um you know, it, it was really easy to do. I mean, it sounds, you know, kind of daunting. It's like you're, you know, you're working with the federal government and a government, asso- you know, association or whatever, and it's kind of scary, I guess. But um, I always found, like, when I first started doing it, I was really, I didn't understand the forms and what you need to put where and all that stuff. So I just called them, and they were always very helpful. And um, they would t- they would spend as long as you needed on the phone with you to walk you through the form and help you fill it all out. And they were really helpful. 
and they weren't like intimidating at all. <laughs> they they didn't lose their patience. They were very um, understanding, and cool. you know, and and you could like talk to them, you know, like a normal person, and not they would not feel like overwhelmed or anything. They they took their time and explained everything. So it was really helpful to call them if you have a question. Well, it's like, like I really like the uh, like from Rafi, you know, uh, his recommendation that uh, it could actually get expensive uh, to copyright. Every every image yeah. every of art, and his recommendation, which I really thought was nice, um, is if you have a work of art that you know you put it online and you happen to notice it's very popular, it's it's very uh, a high seller, you might consider copywriting that that image. But technically, under the under the law, any time that you create a tangible piece of artwork, it is automatically copyrighted. Where copyright will come in, in as far as registering goes, was in the event that you have to go to court, it's a way of backing up, you know, backing up your claim, and you would be entitled to uh, more damages. In fact, uh, the if you won in court, the uh, the offender would have to pay all the court fees, and you could actually earn a higher uh, higher damage damage amount. You know, I think as artists who are coming out and and especially advice for uh, emerging artists don't sweat it about copyright all right there is as Rafi had recommended there are ways to protect your work physically protect your work when you yeah. go, don't be afraid to go online and i like some of his recommendations uh i enjoy listening to those guys because they always come i always learn something brand new and ideally he came up to which i never thought i should know this I mean, when he said it, I like slapped myself in the face. Duh, Clyde, you're a technical guy. You should have known that. When he talked about changing the metadata in your file, it is so easy to do, you know, especially within Windows. You open the, the file. Yeah, you can't, you can't right-click on a Mac and do that. But, well, I can't have been able to anyway. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. In the property section. And it gives you where you can type in your name and the copyright, as much information as you want. Now, when you do that, that helps you. Even though you load your image up to a service or whatever, that will still help in the search engine. It will help your name come up faster in the search engines. And it's like, God, you dummy, why haven't you been doing that? That's that's a resource that, that – I haven't been use, utilizing. It's so easy. Um, at the same time, also, like you said, uh, upload, put on your only, only low resolution, you know, uh, uh, images, a little square, a little postage stamps yeah, type images, which will look so great. Many, yeah, so yeah. many DPIs and. It'll look great on your website, but if anybody try it, copies it and downloads it, they're not going to be able to make much out of it because it's not, it's going to be all pixelated and messed up when they tried to, because it's nice. You can go from large, large yeah. small, but when you go from <laughs> small to large, it doesn't look good. <laughs> yeah. So for an artist, don't be afraid of putting your work out there, you know? And if you do find something that is very, very popular that you, your customers, people just can't get enough of it. Okay, those works you may want to take the extra step and register with the copyright office, you know, because otherwise it's going to cost you a lot. Because I think the fee is like thirty-five dollars per item or something like that, you know. I think that's what it used to be. I think it's gone up. But I used to register um, groups of work because it was cheaper. You could do a group at a time, and and the fee was the same. So, so I and then if I had a uh, image that was in that group that um, was popular, I would just, I would take that one out and register it on it by itself. So what I wasn't paying that much money for every single image because I had hundreds of images. I mean, it was crazy the amount of them because I, I was producing a lot of work and there was no way I could have afforded to <laughs> register each individual. Yeah. It's like now I'm doing, I, I'm producing uh, three and four pieces of new work per week, you know? So in a month time, you know, that's 50, 60 images or more, you know, I, I can't afford to be, you know, uh, of, uh, of registering all those. But um, as a story, 
a bit of a horror story. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm on several different platforms, probably about five different platforms across the internet that, uh, you know, they put my art on home decor products and prints and whatnot. Uh, one of the services, which I'm not going to name the name of it, but last week I had told this story to Diane and Constance. Um, when I, I recently started uh, uh, doing my uh, pulp radio pulp illustration you know, again, and so I had uploaded one of my images, and then three hours later, I get an email from the service. They flagged my image as being a copyright violation. I'm like, what the heck? These pulp radio illustrations are my imagination. They're based on old-time radio radio plays, and they're 100% my, my own. Uh, the style may look like somebody else, but the illustrations – are hand illustrations and you know hand drawn and then I use a computer program to kind of enhance them make them look like vintage old time you know photo you know that's the that's a, the the new versions I'm doing now but they're done with but uh they're black and white done with pen and ink and brush and they're completely from my imagination so I was like I'm you know, so that was strange well then the next day I put two more up and they got flagged. It's like, what is going on here? You know? So they, what they do is they, they, they flag them and they wouldn't allow my products to be sold on it. Cause they have what they call a review board. They were under review, you know? So they didn't tell me to take them down right away. They just said they were considered as possible copyright violations, you know? So, okay. I waited for the emails. Well, after about last Wednesday, the last two images, I received an email where they had approved. They said they were okay. Well, then I got thinking about it. The first image I put up, okay, it was an illustration that was based on the War of the Worlds uh, radio play from 1938 with Orson Welles that had produced. And the title I put on, World, War of Worlds Illustration. And this is where Diane and I, we had talked about it. She said, maybe it's your title, okay? And in the description, I had Orson Welles in there so that one i waited and waited so finally this last friday i just deleted it completely but i re-uploaded it but i took out the name orson wells out of the description and i gave it a completely different name i didn't even list it as, as the war of the worlds as, as the other two illustrations uh i left their original names but going forward i uh no i uh have I've uploaded since then at least five other illustrations and I've just given them a, a, a non-descriptive title. I just call them like PRA number one, PRA number four. Yeah. I haven't had any problems, no problems whatsoever. In fact, when I re-uploaded the other one, the war of the worlds one, no problems. It's so <laughs> what I'm thinking was their algorithm, uh, flagged it. And so that's what, you know, then they had to have a physical human being, you know, look at it. And that's what, uh, you know, was taking the time, whatever. But that, but it really, uh, it, it astounded me. I said, wait a minute, these are original works of art from my mind. I mean, I've never had that happen before, you know. So uh, another horror story that I've had years ago, you talk about copyright violation, where I had actually had somebody technically violate my copyright. I, every once in a while, I do searches on the internet of my, you know, name and images of my sites to see how many different sites I'm listed on. And I saw one of my religious paintings, uh, the one I call the uh, Doubting Thomas, you know, painting, was on this uh, church's blog. Now, the image they had captured was really a poor image. So, you know, but it was mine. But it didn't... And they didn't give a link, any attribution to me. So technically, they had violated my copyright. But I wasn't going to go and, and, and send a dirty note to a church. <laughs> yeah, I was glad that they wanted to use it in their blog, you know, posting. And then later on, I found... Well, what you could do is send them a note um, saying, you can use my image, but please... Um, give me credit, you know, right. uh, for, for using it. 
Well, yeah, have, well, you can, uh, have and a, you could, have you could send them a tag. better. Yeah, and you could send them a better image that they could use. So well, it's a actually, more representation. A, a a month later, this is all around the uh, Easter Easter period, and like a a few weeks later, I I saw it again on another blog, and it was with the church. Now that one, they had given me attribution. They had a link back to my site. Well, that's good. In both cases, I didn't contact either one of them. I wasn't going to bug a church. I was flattered that they uh, wanted to use my religious image with their, you know, with, with their parishioners. Yeah, well, use, using it like that isn't as bad as somebody taking your image and making prints or something and selling, selling it, you know. Or slapping it on T-shirts and selling it. Yeah. So those That's where it really gets those are my horror stories. Uh, Con, you've, got a, you've got an art horror story. Share your, your art horror story. I do. I have I have had paintings stolen, and even uh, in Pensacola there was a gallery that I had paintings in. It they just kept giving me a run around, run around, and when I finally somebody called me one day and said your paintings are sitting there, go pick them up. Well, when I went to pick them up, three paintings, four paintings were missing. They had sold four paintings, made the money off of them, never paid me. Then. I've had I had uh, some paintings stolen uh, when I moved up here from Alabama. There was a whole box. Well, a whole box. Uh, they're in the box. They're in a frame, kind of frame box or whatever. I had, <laughs> and I know the guys got up here before we did, and they must have gone back in there and took one of those boxes out and, and did something with it because there's I've got paintings missing. You know, in that box, I packed at least two paintings per box, you know, and wrapped them up and stuff with towels and foam and all that kind of stuff to keep them safe. But um, those paintings aren't anywhere. I have not found them since I've been living, even here, five years later, if not, they were gone. Did you, did you have photographs and everything of them? Oh, yeah, I have photographs of the paintings, yeah. yeah. You might be coming into some uh, future money someday, you know, if you find them popped up on the internet somewhere, somebody claiming as their own work. Yeah. Hey. yeah. <laughs> so the ones from Pensacola, though, a couple of them, I, I didn't have time to photograph them before I stuck them in there. I just went and stuck them in there. Uh-oh. Uh, they were, they must have been good paintings because they sold. <laughs> but that's, that's but some... I've been really scared to put anything in a gallery anymore because of that. I have not shown it in another gallery. And I think that's, you know, when you get burned like that, that's bad. Yeah. So. Well, that's the, the, the gist of it. Uh, to protect yourself, you know, make sure you, you know, you document. Like I was prepared. If I had to, had to, uh, you know, argue with those folks about my illustrations, I had, fo- I had photographs of when, of, of a couple, uh, when they're on the drawing board that which is what i call the raw photo before i cuz i used to i'll take a photograph of the, of the, on the drawing board just to, to to use that to see if if everything you know looks okay and then when it's actually completed then i'll take a really good photograph for posting for posting on my sites so i had evidence of if you know if they came back and insisted that the, you know somebody was claiming it as theirs I had evidence that no, this is mine. See, here it is on the drawing board, and here's here's the finished product. You know, so I I've done it with all my art. I used to take take two or three. I take uh, you know two or three photographs in the beginning, and then I take the final photograph, you know, the one that I use. Well, they're gonna steal it. They're gonna steal it. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. You I've, know, just you know, it, it's I, just I'm, gone. I'm thinking you know. that in the event of something, you know, I've even had family steal my paintings. So <laughs> in laws. <laughs> So as you're working for artists, you know, to kind of keep that in mind, because uh, as you as your career uh, gains uh, prominence, that's when you're going to encounter these things, you know, and, it, you know, uh, it, it's a fact. There are people, you know, they you hear stories. All We all know stories about an artist that started out in his garage and, you know, 20 years later, 30 years later, you know, is paying himself for millions of dollars, you know, and but a lot of his early early works like there's a on linkedin there's a collector that i follow who uh, has uh, he collects all of uh, 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 william what's the name william cooney i think and uh, jackson pollock's 
he has all of the early works. He collects the really early works. In fact, every time he posts an image of, of an early Jackson Pollock, it don't even look like Jackson Pollock's later stuff. I would love to have a Jackson Pollock. <laughs> I would love to have one, but I don't think I'll be able to afford one of those in my lifetime. <laughs> Both of them is uh, like he has whenever Jackson Pollock, this guy lives in California, and when Jackson Pollock was in California, when he was starting out, he uh, uh, several of his paintings he gave, that's how he paid his rent. You know, he gave them to his landlord, you know, and then or, and then paid his bar bill. He gave them to the bartenders, you know, the bar owners. He gave his paintings out, you know, and these were all of his really early, his early flat file stuff and drawings. And and then over the years, you know, not for the millions of dollars that his paintings go for now, but a considerable price, you know. I mean, at the time, maybe Jackson Pollock used, only paid $300 for his rent and gave a painting, but – you know, this guy when he bought buys them, he's paid four, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars. You know, for them now, you know, and um, and more for some of them. So people hear these stories, and so some people get in their idea if they if they keep an eye on you and they see you and, and they see the press and they they see it's your progress and or they hear other people, you know, like especially with social media, you know, they start seeing or that we're winning awards or whatever. They may be tempted to uh to steal from you you know and thinking that uh, hey you know this guy is going to be worth some money someday so um i think as an artist uh, emerging artist uh should um you know kind of protect themselves you don't necessarily have to go the full route of you know registering copyright but uh all these little procedures uploading low resolutions another thing that i do even with the uh works that i sell everything that i sell um uh, I issue what's called a certificate of authenticity. Now, this still isn't going to prevent somebody from forging, but it does it does two things for me. One, the collector, it instills in the collector that I myself think that I am going to have a future. My art career is valuable. I'm going to progress. So that tells them psychologically, gives them that sense. At the same time, on the certificate, it's numbered. I keep a log. I have it's a unique number, and I have my signature on the certificate. So they got my signature on the certificate, and they've got the way I sign my paintings. You know? So if in the future something were to come about, I've got that, that certificate. They have that certificate saying, hey, this is my work. I created this back in 2017, 2018, you know. And so – it some people may look at that. I, I, I watched it when I started out. I watched the video where we were talking about that, and they were saying that some people were saying, Well, you know, you, you're really your ego is, is getting in the way, you know, you think too much of it, but no, it's an actual incentive for your future collectors for them to, um, it, you know, that if you as an artist have confidence in your skill in your career, they will take also take you seriously so uh what few collectors that have been returning collectors that have purchased two and three they've done commissions or they purchased two separate works from me uh now they they actually since the first time i gave me a certificate they ask you got that certificate in there yeah the certificate's in there okay <laughs> yeah. so they expect that now you know and it, it gets a nice warm feeling but it is a a tiny secondary way of protecting your work too, you know? So, and a certificate of authenticity is very, very easy. I mean, I found one on the, on the internet, you know, someday my daughters will inherit that log. So <laughs> in, 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 yeah, I do that too. I number all my paintings. I have a um, running <laughs> tally of them all. <laughs> they all have their numbers. I haven't done that. I think it, it's hard. I think it's harder for people to, um, copy um actual paintings like you know because they don't they can't you in the in photographs you can't see all the brush strokes and things but i think it is important to keep a um a log of some sort on the progress of the painting so that you can prove that it came from your hand absolutely you know where somebody just seeing the finished product online that they wouldn't have all that Right. I know there's some artists that do that do licensing. They work on computer um, images, and they'll put their 
um, they'll, they'll have like a signature and they'll put it teeny tiny in the image somewhere. And they, they're the only ones that know where it's at. And you can't see it unless you blow it way up. And then all of a sudden there, there are signatures sitting there. That's that's so it's cool. like, it's kind of like hidden. Yeah. <clears throat> There's the idea of watermarks on your images, you know, what watermarks kind of work, but they don't really, because even somebody that doesn't really know all that much about, you know, Photoshop or something can take them off. That's not, mm-hmm. not a, not a real deterrent. <laughs> and I like what Raffi and them said. They said to make postage size, postage stamp size. Yeah. So that if they try to blow them up and print them, they're not going to get much out <laughs> off of them. But I yeah. think it does in fine art America and, um, art pal don't they protect your photographs also sure do because you have mm-hmm. to you have to upload a high resolution image in order to mm-hmm. be, to be reproduced on all the products but when you go to their website and if you right click and download one of the images from from the from you know from your page it's at 72 dpi and it's like 500 by 500 I mean, pixels it's a little tiny yeah, it's a little tiny thing yeah and um so on all the sites that I'm on, they they have that feature. There's, you know, you can even, you can use in the, like with the uh, Firefox browser, you know, uh, on, uh, on uh, uh, Instagram and on uh, uh, somebody like Redbubble, you can't right click. It won't let you right click and, and download. But with, mm. but with the browser, you can take what's called a screenshot. Bottom of the option, you, you click on that, and then you can take and highlight the section that you want to, and it will save that. But it's still it's 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 a small resolution. It's not mm-hmm. you know it, it it saves it as a PNG file, you know. But it's a it, it's still a small resolution. So even that, you know. Uh, so it's. Oh, sometimes I'll drag photographs of stuff that I like off onto the desktop because you can do that with a Mac. Just drag it. But I never copied them. I just like to look at them. So it's, and they're just little small things. I'm not going to use them, but I, I might think about using the arrangement. But because sometimes it's good for composition of other artists. You like the composition, you can use different articles to make that particular co- uh, composition up, you know. Talking about working from photographs, exactly. You know, there's mm-hmm. there's no uh, there's no law against you know using as as models. What they're talking about is if you try and and reproduce exactly what's in the photo. Right. That, yeah. That's that's where you run into problems. And the thing about using material from royalty free uh, websites, what's nice like uh, I use uh, uh, Pixel dot com. Uh, Pix- mm-hmm. Pixabay, Pixabay.com. Yeah, that's it. As a, it's yeah. a free site. You can download the images in different sizes. You can download high, high resolution for mm-hmm. know, production, but that's, but that's the purpose. They're royalty free. I download- yeah, I use paint my photo. I just sometimes when I'm when I'm out of ideas, you know, something yeah. to paint. My for uh, for reference, I just uh, download the the lower resolution because I'm just looking looking at the item you know in it for you know for uh but if i were to accidentally really get good and reproduce almost exactly as what's in the image and if somebody were to you know see that the fact that it's from a royalty free site would i would be covered i don't know if you guys saw uh a few weeks ago i had posted a actually i think it was a been now about a month ago i posted i did a uh, water car of drawing uh, illustration of uh, this little squirrel eating a sunflower okay now that image came from pixabay uh, i participated in an online group called purely watercolor and i saw that somebody had posted they also did did their version of that i thought i recognized it right away i thought it was kind of neat so i made in the comments i uploaded mine i said i like your version better because his actually his his was better than mine yeah but <laughs> Immediately, you know, he, he we knew where it came from. You know, it came from the yeah you know, Pixabay Royal Tree. So yeah, you know, it was we you know complimented each other, and he made a you know comments. It's it's really nice to see how an artist's interpretations of the same image. You know, mm-hmm. it is. Yeah, and he had took a little bit different approach to mine, but you could still see that we both used the same photograph to you know to create the work of art. You know, so so it is possible without realizing it to um if you're using a photo 
uh, to reproduce something that is recognizable as to where, you know, what, what photograph you use. So that's why I always, for almost all of them, even if I'm only looking at something as a model, I always use all of the, I get all my reference photos from uh, a royalty free site somewhere. And I use mostly pixabay.com, you know, I I I've got the list here of the other ones that uh, I like. I like the uh, paint my photo one. And what they ask you to do is if you do use it for a painting to please post it and put the person's photo, their ID down saying, you know, yeah. linking it back to the photo instead of because you have your site and they have their site. But you can put a link in there, which will take to the take it and show it also on their site. Some of, it, some of the. It. On Pixabay, they have a, in the comments. They have that they want. It's called attribution. They want you to, you know, to to give a link back. But, mm-hmm. you know, but still, it's when with regards to copper, it's like on one of our videos, the uh, uh, talking the the basic copyright information for artists. That was one of the subjects that was brought up about using, you know, reference photos. You know, you have to use reference photos to. Uh, 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 you know, unless you really, really are good in imagination, or unless you're drawing from life, you know, you, and so I use a combination. I use, my daughters take fantastic photos. Like I said last week, I use a lot of their photos, you know, for my work. So I'm not worried about, they're not going to sue me for copyright violation. Yeah. yeah. The next best thing is to take your own. And then you don't have to worry yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> but you can't always get shots, you know, like that. African animals, unless you're on a safari or something, and you know it's like there's things that you can't see that aren't in the area where you are. Well, I think artists, you know, when they hear about all this copyright, they get a little nervous and tense. Well, there's no reason to be tense about it. You know, you just use some common sense. You know, don't copy something exactly, and also don't do creative a piece of work that another artist has created, you know, except for the great masters, all those that are all in the public domain, you know, you could, I can my version of care of, uh, 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 Caravaggio's, you know, doubting Thomas, you know, it's, you could tell it came from him, but it's not exactly like him. It's, you know, my, my version, you know, of it. And, uh, you know, and I, you know, uh, influence, but then you know all of his works is is available. It's in the you know public domain. You can you know it's actually I found a, a place online that they specialize in reproducing original hand painted oil paintings from the great masters. So you can get yourself a Monet, or you can get a uh, Raphael that's and it's been hand <laughs> by an artist that looks like a real Raphael, and, <laughs> but it's. Not, <laughs> That there's a there's artists that are good, you know. They're good uh, that can that talented that can yeah you know, replicate. You know, and I was reading the site and they actually on 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 some of their pieces they have more than one artist. You know, they have like a team of artists. You know, that are good at at uh, reproducing. You know, the the good masters. So, uh, or you can go sit in the museum and paint <laughs> from one. <laughs> You do that in our school, don't they? They have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We had to do that. <laughs> yeah. We, we, in one class I took, they had, we had an African mask show, and I went in and did. They were so cool. I did a bunch of sketches of the different masks. So, and then I've got one painting here that I named after. I call it the mask, but the only reason I call it, you, if you look at it, you can't see it unless you know what it's supposed to look like. The, if you see the picture of the mask that I copied it from, then you would know that's what it was when you look at it. But it's hard to tell that that mask is in that painting because it's a cubism. So, Okay, well, before we wrap up, it's time to look at our goals. You remember? Oh. This last- <laughs> hey, poopy do. <laughs> <laughs> our numbers you know that we had said okay we had uh, said that we were going to across the various social media sites we were going to have at least a five percent increase well i'm happy to say that none of us reached that <laughs> if you add all mine together i would have reached it <laughs> none of, but we did all of us did a pretty good job so we'll start with diane okay <laughs> 
right out of Find Our America, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter, the one site that she actually did pretty good on, she increased, was Find Our America. The last time, about a week ago or two weeks ago, she only had 738 visitors. She actually somehow she increased it to 749. I did that. I did it this morning as of. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't do anything with that, <laughs> so I don't know how that happened. But that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Constance, Constance was the same thing. Of all of her size between Fine Art America, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter, she actually increased. Uh, the last time I took her, one thousand and five hundred nine visitors. She's up up to one thousand five hundred ninety nine. Oh, it's higher than I wrote down here on my paper, so it's gone up even more. <laughs> oh, so you wrote that? Okay. Yeah, I wrote down the five hundred nine, and then when I wrote this in, it was five seventy. So it's gone up even more. I so that's good. I added some more stuff on Fine America until I started having headaches, and then I had to back off. It's about eleven o'clock, whenever I went and uh, you know. Went through the list and, and checked the place. Okay, now, Clyde, I had three areas I improved, all right? Fine Art America, I had 49,861 visitors. I'm up. No, I had 47,861. I got to read my handwriting. I'm up to 48,777. I was supposed to have gone to 50,000, so I didn't quite make that, you know? My Instagram was uh, 1,237 followers. It, it went up to 1,249. It was actually up to, to 1,255 yesterday. But this morning, I dropped. I don't know what, I guess. <laughs> I think I had some followers that were, I don't, I used to, like if somebody followed me, I would automatically follow them. I don't do that anymore because some of them, after I go back and review if they're not art related, I'm not going to follow them, you know? So I've been going through, like I said, pruning out, pruning my list, my list out. So, uh, anyhow, 1249, that ain't, that ain't too bad. And then LinkedIn, I had 1,721 this morning. I had 1,763 and the LinkedIn is just like an automatic, you know, I get followers, you know, requests, you know, all the time throughout the day. And my Twitter actually dropped. <laughs> so, Twitter dropped? Yeah, Twitter was 2,774 last week. But I don't even know how many people I've got on Twitter. 2,070. Yeah, you know, so I've lost lost some few. And, uh, of course, I don't post any political postings or on any of these. I just share my oh. uh, my art and my Internet radio station you know, information. So Hey, I, had, I have a pretty good uh, – I, what is my following? I have followers. Does that mean people following me? If it says followers, yeah, see? yeah. I have 191 followers on. Okay, you gained Twitter. You gained on Twitter. You gained one since a week ago because even this morning when I checked, you only had 190. So you gained one since this morning. There you go. On Twitter. What was my What was my Twitter before? Did you write it down last time. Yeah, it was 190 the last time I checked about a couple of weeks ago. So, so it's gone. Well, I got one more, yeah. one more. That's that's pretty good. Diana lost. She was 90. She's now down to 89. <laughs> <laughs> well, on my that, that my post, my post with my um painting that I framed, I had 3.3 thousand people saw that. And I had over, right. almost four. I had almost four hundred engagements. So that's a lot. On, mm -hmm. on that is a lot. What, what site? Twitter, Instagram, or which site? On Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Okay. Uh, what, yeah, we didn't do Facebook though. We haven't done Facebook. I know. <laughs> and the only reason why I didn't go through the numbers on Facebook because number one, it, it's it's a combination. It's not just one, and it's it is it's so hard unless you you unless it's it's hard to 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 uh, look at uh, from an outside. So you know, to like if I went to Diane's page and tried to get her numbers, I wouldn't be able to get an accurate. It would either be less or more than what she actually sees. So Facebook, I just kind of my members have been jumping pr pretty good on Facebook on both of the different mm -hmm. ones: the jewelry page and ones the 
art page, they and jump. Now on my, of course, you know, you have we on Facebook, you know, you have your individual feed, which is where you know your followers, mm -hmm. the general public doesn't see that that. Uh, but uh, on my feed, of course, I have artists. I have people that are listeners to my internet radio station on there. I have uh, family, actual family and actual friends, people that I physically know that are that post on there. Well, what I notice amongst the artists is, okay, I started the last few posts that I put up, especially when I started this new process of, you know, glazing. I would put on there the top, the post, the title of the post, I say, fresh off the easel. Now, before that, no one else is doing it. I've seen two other artists now have started doing that now. When they post their images, <laughs> I kind of, okay, Clyde, you're starting a trend. <laughs> they weren't <laughs> doing that before, but now they also say, fresh off the easel. <laughs> I used to say, hot off, hot off the jewelry bench on mine when I had something new. So, like, when I post a new image, you know, I've been, especially the work in progress images, you know, I say, fresh off the easel, you know. <laughs> and also... I wasn't posting before work in progress photos. So I've been doing it. And there's a couple artists that are doing that too, that weren't doing that before. They're now doing it. So I'm thinking, okay, Clyde, you're setting a trend. You know, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do that on Instagram. They show work, you know, work in progress. Yeah, no, that's a different story on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm just you know, talking about my personal feed on Facebook, which I, thought, I just thought wow. I just thought it was kind of funny. You know, I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you never know. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm setting a trend, you know. <laughs> okay, well, let's wrap this up. This is episode seventy for the Artist Friends podcast, and we've been talking with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And um, one last thing before we wrap it up, um, with the you know, the elections is pretty much over with or almost over with. And I think uh, something that uh, I've been seeing a lot of postings, you know, negative and positives, you know, across social media and everything. I think as a working artist, you know, we've emphasized this quite a bit in our discussions. Um, don't hit your train to one movement or another. Uh, your art is your art. You, your career is your career. You determine your career. So whatever happens in our society, whatever happens in, in our world, yeah, sure, it may affect you, but uh, don't let it uh, change your direction. You control your life and you control your career. And these are the, the best words of wisdom that I can pass to uh, our listeners. So I'm going to say goodbye to Diane and Constance. Bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Bye, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Good night, folks. Thank you so much for listening. And as I always say, give us a heads up. Give us some love. Give us some uh, a uh, positive ratings and uh, star ratings and thumbs up if you like what you're listening to. Good night, everybody. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.